You might be surprised to find out that maybe only 5% of patent ca cases that I work on, we actually do prior art searching on. We get patents issued for people all the time and rarely do we have problems with random prior art popping up that stops us from actually getting a patent issued. So in the 95% in the of cases where we don't do a prior art search, you should check out my other video, which is top five reasons why you don't need a prior art search. This video is for that 5% of cases where a prior art search does make sense and where I would say it's almost essential before starting the process. So this is top five reasons why you might actually need a prior art search. Number five, market research. So especially for startups and people who are individuals developing products, it's pretty important to know what the market is like. Who else is out there? What products are similar? Um, and doing a prior art search can be one way of doing that. Now, when I talk about prior art, prior art can be issued patents and patent publications, and those are what are mostly used um, to form prior art rejections during the examination process at the USPTO. However, things like blog posts, scientific articles, YouTube videos like this, um, products on Amazon, um, those are all potentially prior art. And so doing market research on those things and maybe even searching patent literature can be useful in just understanding what the, what, what the product field is like, who your competitors are, and what other products are, are, are similar out in the field, and maybe old products that, that didn't work. Now, to be clear, it's, it's good to do market research. And in fact, I think it's essential, especially for startups. But doing it to determine patentability, um, as I talk about in my other video, it doesn't really provide a lot of value. So if you focus on doing this prior art research as mostly market research, you may actually get a lot of value from that. Number four, a stronger patent. So you may be surprised to find out that uh, patents are issued all the time that are totally invalid because the patent examiner missed some extremely important, important prior art. The reality is, is that patent examiners are way overburdened. They have very little time to examine each patent application. And the world of prior art is so vast that a lot of times it's very possible for things to slip, slip through the cracks. Now, doing your own prior art search um, that can be beneficial because you may find things that the examiner could have overlooked and you may have a stronger patent as a result because you are required to submit any prior art that you find that's relevant to the USPTO at the time you file your, uh, your non-provisional patent application. So you, by doing a prior art search, you may help uh, create a stronger patent for yourself down the road. Number three, if you're working with an inexperienced patent attorney, so when I started out, I did a lot of prior art searches and I was glad that I did because it really gave me a sense of what was out there um, because I hadn't been through the patent examination process so I, so I didn't really know what sort of prior art was going to come up um, and how examiners would uh, create rejections. So it was really valuable for me to go and do prior art searching. Um, for more experienced patent attorneys, since we've been through the patent process a lot, we kind of have a general sense of what prior art is gonna come up. That's not to say that we know the exact invention and the specific field, but we generally have an idea of what the issues are gonna be, where patentability may be an issue and where, where it's not gonna be. And so we can craft the patent application so it has a very good likelihood of surviving examination. Um, so for example, with really simple products that you know, can sometimes have a problem getting through patentability, we add a lot of additional description so that when the, the prior art comes up that we have a hunch that is going to come up, we can navigate around that. So if you're working with an inexperienced patent attorney, it may be good to have a prior art search done to help the patent attorney better understand what the prior art world is like so that when he or she is drafting your patent application, uh, you're going to get a higher quality application that is going to be more likely to uh, survive the examination process. Number two, if investors insist on it. So if you are partnering with investors or other folks who are, who are helping you out with your business, sometimes those people may insist on a prior art search. A lot of times these folks may not be very savvy in the patent process. 
Um, and so they're concerned about what's out there um, and they don't realize that in the vast majority of cases, prior searching just isn't done on most products. And so they will want to insist on having a prior search done because they kind of buy into uh, the common misconception that prior searches are standard, they're required. It's, it's something that needs to be done in every single case uh, before you file a patent application. So, you know, in, in those cases, I would say, yeah, go ahead and do a prior search if it's if it's going to mean that you're going to be able to lock down financing or, or be able to work with really important people who are going to um, be able to move your business forward. Um, it's it's not necessarily worthwhile to battle against them and tell them why prior searching doesn't make sense, why it's not very cost effective, why it's not going to really give them the answers uh, that they want. Sometimes it's just worthwhile to go ahead and uh, do the prior art searching and help the optics of your business proposition. And number one, for simple products. So this is probably the number one reason why I suggest doing a prior art search. It's where the product is relatively simple, doesn't have a lot of moving parts, isn't super complex, um, isn't something maybe in the, in, in the computer field, um, and it's something that has by and large been already developed or can be easily developed in a, in, in a prototype. Um, those sort of things can be really benefited by having a prior art search done on them. In those cases where there's not a lot of different potential points of novelty and where there's maybe one thing that you're going to try to hang your hat on um, in terms of patentability, it, it really makes sense to know whether there's prior out there on that one specific point of novelty because then it does end up being kind of a binary thing as in, you know, is it out there or is it not? With more complex inventions, it's more of a question of, you know, can you find a bunch of different prior to cobble together to come to the elements that you have in your very specific process or your very complex product that has a lot of different things going on. So for simple consumer products, a lot of times I almost uh, push people to do prior art searches and that's where maybe that 5% of prior art searches that I do, it's for those sort of products. So that is top five reasons why you might need a patent search. Hope you liked the video. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Did I miss something? Is there something you'd like to add? Um, also hit the subscribe orb here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, and we got some videos here. Um, one is my video to uh, top five reasons why you don't need a prior art search. And that occurs in, uh, like I said, 95% of the cases. Check that one out as well. Um, Compare to this one, see if you agree or disagree. Um, but we got all sorts of other great content, got some other good videos here. So uh, yeah, uh, check that out and uh, we will see you again in the next video. Happy patenting everybody.